<laughs> ah, it's fine. This is easy. Easiest job I ever had. This sounds so stupid. I have not had enough caffeine for a human being to live. To help. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got a little showdown going down on today's video. We're comparing two underwater cameras. One, the expensive, one, the cheap. How do they hold up? What's worth it, what's not? The good, the bad, the ugly, and the indifferent. I'm gonna try and cover all of that. And we're gonna give you some of the clips that we've captured when we are out on the ice, or at least that we attempted to capture. You'll learn more about that in a little bit. So let's get into it. We got Aquaview versus a yo-yo. A yo-yo? Or really any kind of generic Amazon-based product, right? So the cheaper camera versus the heck of a lot more expensive camera, the Aquaview. We've been lucky enough to be able to test out both. Uh, a yo-yo was kind enough to send us one just to use, so that was super cool. And thanks to a couple of buddies, we also got hooked up with a crazy deal on the AquaView. So we've been hooked up with these, but if you guys are looking to spend your hard-earned money, I wanted to give you a little comparison here from the office and some footage out on the ice actually comparing these things. Keep in mind too that these cameras are not limited to on the ice usage only. You can definitely use them open water fishing or even just kind of like spelunking, treasure hunting, you know, whatever the heck you're doing. They can be helpful for that. All right, so we're gonna get into that here in just a second. Before we do, if you guys like the content, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, and ring that notification bell. Also, come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern, hang out with us live right here on YouTube. It's a blast. Talk to tons of cool people in the fishing space, and we'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. All right, let's talk about these cameras. So let's do this. Let's start with the AOYO, since it is basically an all-in-one case. Now it is much smaller in comparison versus the AquaView that we do have, which is the HD7i model. This is a $189 version. So this comes with more of a five-inch screen versus the seven that we have on the AquaView, but you do have to purchase a lot of the accessories for the AquaView separately, which adds up the already super high cost of getting a device like that. This one's all in one for like 189 bucks. So let's see what's inside of it. Real quick on the case, visuals, durability. Durability seems fine. I've thrown this around in my sled a few times. You've even got like some little grippy feet there and there, depending on how you position or use this. I just throw it in the back of the sled. I actually put a Hobie H crate in the back of my sled. You can use a milk crate or whatever, but I just put all my extra gear in there that I want to keep dry off the bottom of the sled where ice is typically you know, sitting and then eventually melting in my garage. So this has held up really well in there. I don't know, I haven't like tried to run it over with a truck or anything, but I mean, gosh dang, it's probably gonna hold up to most things. That said, when you open this guy up, visually, this is extremely unappealing. So you see there's a lot of stuff going on in here. There's our battery, here's our camera wire, and then here's all like our, our power wires, LED, all that stuff. So let's kind of break this down individually. First and foremost, one decently cool feature here is if I press this button, this entire screen here comes out. So you can use that a number of different ways. It actually has like this little slot on the back. Now I'm sure there's an accessory I have to purchase separately because it doesn't attach to this, but I could see potentially that you could just mount this up somewhere else, making it much easier to use because as you can see, this crate doesn't open all the way. It's a 90 degree, a little over 90 degree angle that you can get out of it. And it's on these hinges, which I have no idea how long those hinges are gonna last. So I do like the fact that you can take this out. This could be a travel case, and then you could just set this up on something, some sort of wall mount, look at that. There's some sort of mount or stand or something. I'm sure you can get on Amazon. It's probably super easy. I just didn't see it, so my bad. And that would be really helpful. So I can have it in a better position for me as I'm fishing so I can see you know, what's going on down there, right? So I, I do like that. Now, if we take all this out of here, this whole thing exists separately, right? You are gonna plug this into the camera so you'll be you know, attached to the camera as it goes under. Here's your battery, just a super basic 12 volt battery. Can easily be charged by an AC adapter, so you just plug that in, get this battery all charged up. As for the other wire attachments that you have here, they're all labeled. So we got our camera, we have our 
power and we have our video. So that's where we get the actual output to this TV screen. Moving on down the line, we've got the other plugins here attached to our camera line, which goes to our camera, which also for whatever reason has fishy eyes on it. And actually the funny thing is here, when I play you some of the footage from the AOYO that I was hopefully able to pull and put into this video, I, um, I haven't edited it yet, so I hope it works out. In that footage, there's a bluegill literally just staring at the camera. And I wanna say it just thought this was like a really big fish or something. It was just scoping me out. So that was kind of funny. Anyways. We've got this big spool for the camera line. You've got your video, your camera plug-in, and your LED right there. You got this nice little Velcro piece here to keep your line spooled up and taken care of. There's all your camera wire there. Uh, there is a lot. I didn't like read the instructions on this, and it doesn't say on here how much, but I would assume probably like 100 yards or so, maybe more. Oh, look, it's right there. 30 meters. Convert that. Okay, so 30 meters is just shy of 100 feet. So you have 100 feet. You can go pretty deep with this. I don't know if you're like hunting super deep water or lake trout or something like that, or you're out on like a bigger lake. Maybe you could throw this down there if you wanted to. Then we get down to our actual camera. Again, as you can see, there's eyes there. You can see these little plastic rings. We actually attach those ourselves. So here's like one option for a camera attachment. This would be your horizontal position. This is personally just the one I favor when I'm on the ice. This allows me to like look, I'll dig two holes, I can look at my jig, and I can see the fish coming in and out as I'm moving that jig around. Other than that, you got a couple other attachment pieces in here. You've got a bobber, so you can let it sit like literally just under this bobber. This is interesting. However, I'm gonna talk about my frustrations here in a second. Uh, maybe that's more like an open water thing you can do. So there you go, that's, that's it. In a nutshell, it's all in here, 189 bucks. You got everything you could ever need to make this thing work. So on the good side of this, it's an all-in-one package and it's cheap. Let's talk about the actual image quality that it produces. Now, as you could assume from the AquaView HD 7i, it's high definition. So the image clarity on the AquaView is insane. And if you get a good enough capture card, don't worry, we'll talk about that problem here in a minute you can actually get 1080p output. So the actual recording that you watch back also has and maintains high clarity. With the AOYO, few issues we ran to. First of all, the display, I had a problem with at first until I fixed the brightness. So I cranked the brightness basically to the top so that I could see, and I gotta tell you guys, it's not a dirty lake that I was fishing. It's pretty clear water. Uh, I was in a sandy area, so it's even clearer than you normally would have. But the LED on the camera just wasn't doing enough. I think there were, potentially was like some vegetation in the way, so I repositioned it, and it was still too dark. Like half the screen, the bottom screen, it was like from the midpoint up, I had pretty good clarity, but I was not seeing anything down here, which was making it challenging. Crank that brightness up, and I was able to all of a sudden finally see more of the bottom which was really helpful. So first thing I'd recommend is play with your brightness settings a whole heck ton. There's not a crazy amount of features on this. It's pretty simple. Uh, and again, i will say it gets the job done. It just depends on how well you want that job to be done. So beyond that, once I fixed the brightness, I could see things definitely much better, way more usable. From there, recording is a major flaw in this design. And I think it's just the inexpensive nature of the whole thing. Also, there's speakers on the back of this. This has gotta be just a real generic, like flat screen mountable TV piece, right? Anyways, so recording wise, you got a little SD card slot right here. You can fit any SD card into there, any standard one. You can use a micro SD, you just put it into the SD card adapter and you throw it in there. So it comes with like an eight gig, which is insanely small but it's a hyper generic SD card. So right off the bat, that SD card did not work for us at all. It failed to record, even though we were seeing recording on here, it made us format the card first. Turns out it makes you do that every time regardless. So you format the card and whatever software they're using in here 
loads your card all the way full. So when you plug it into your computer, you're gonna see like this big red bar on it, like this thing is packed with just bogus files. I don't know what's on it. That doesn't make me happy at all. That's uh, confusing and a little bit sus. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but it just filled a eight gig card. And I was like, okay, I'll just put a bigger SD card in there. So I put a 32 gig in here and it filled that all the way too. So, hey, yo, yo, what's up with that? I don't get it. Uh, that was real weird. And apparently we, we had like a, a nice pike strike on camera that Paul saw. So Paul caught a pike just on a little baby ice jig. It was crazy. It was awesome. So wonderful experience. We thought we had it on camera. We go back to plug the SD card into his computer to pull the footage and the whole file was corrupt. So we we're like, okay, maybe it's just a generic SD card problem. So I switched out to a ScanDisk Extreme, like some of the highest quality micro SD cards you can get and a good solid SD card adapter. Plug that baby in. I went out and recorded yesterday and I pulled that footage up again. It doesn't work with any like standard media player. So like Windows Media Player, unplayable. I downloaded VLC Media Player. You guys can do the same thing if you wanna try that. And VLC made it playable so I could watch it back. The image quality is pretty bad. It's pretty grainy. I'd give it like a 480p at best. Uh, I don't think I can give it much higher than that. It's pretty low quality, okay? But it, you, get, you can get the point. Like if I'm just trying to see what's going on underwater, fantastic. I can see for 189 bucks, I can see everything. I can see structure, I can see vegetation, I can see fish. I can like play them with the jig. It happens in real time, which makes it really effective when you're trying to catch some finicky fish down there. So I think it's functional. I just don't think that it's something that gets me super pumped because like I'd love to watch that footage later. That pike strike, I'm real sad that we don't have that footage to share with you guys. Paul was excited, I was excited. So you got the above the ice situation where we're like, yeah, we caught a pike. But you don't get to see this pike like spook all the perch that were in town and then come just like jam on this micro sized jig. That would have been so cool to replay. I didn't even get to see it on camera because I was fishing in my own spot. And uh, you know, we don't have any recording to play for you. So that's a bummer. Yeah, so I mean, that, that's kind of like the biggest con for me. It's if you wanted, better quality, better lighting, uh, you know, in other words, like better functionality for what you're trying to do. And if you really want to record, this might not be the best choice for you. But if you just want to see what's going on underwater and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg, heck yeah, more power to you. This gets the job done. And it's not that, it's really not that bad. Um, I think batteries like these are generic. So even if this died, we could replace it for pennies. And... This is actually a generic case too. So if you ever broke your case, you get a new one again for like pennies. This is also generic. It's like all these parts are super replaceable and cheap, making this a hyper functional purchase for somebody looking to save some money. So I think it's great in all those ways. Just do not use this if you want to rely on your recordings for say YouTube videos or just playing back for your own enjoyment later. By the way, in that box, it has this nice little foam screen protector. So you put it between all the wires and the screen so you don't cause any scratches to the screen or any issues, break the L L or break the LCD or anything. You got instructions, not important, nobody needs those. And you actually have a little sunscreen, sun visor here, which could be nice for those bluebird skies, bright days. There you go, that's the AOYO. 189 bucks, there's actually four or five different models varying from I think 140 up to like 220. And they come with small and big screens and different variations of like what you can get with it. So do your research, read the reviews, but there's my opinion. And we showed you some B-roll there too, kind of giving you the up close, better lighting situation so you can see it on the desk. You guys are always asking for that, so I will oblige. Okay. <sighs> oh, by the way, that thing is super light. This thing is not. So let's talk about this. This is the AquaView HD 7i. So you can see that we got a seven inch screen, much bigger screen, just like with fishing sonars, any electronics, the bigger the screen, the better the clarity, the better results you're going to get from it. So they they come in nine inches. They come in bigger sizes than even that. I think they have 12s and stuff. The bigger the screen, the easier it is to see stuff. So the more functional and effective you'll be on the water. So I love this thing. It is super heavy. This probably weighs about 10 to 12 pounds right here. And it's mostly all this extremely heavy duty 
camera cable. Now, as you can see with that, much thicker, much more robust, much less likely to be broken, bitten off, damaged due to abrasion. So this is the hyper durable camera versus this camera cable right here. Look at that. You guys can see how much thinner that is. And uh, this could easily be damaged, bitten off, broken off. You get hung up on a log or something and you try and pull it a little bit too hard. You're probably gonna break this cable. So that's one thing just to keep in mind with this model. Okay, otherwise, as I'll show you here in this B-roll, you can adjust the screen flat. It goes into a carrying case, which is this right here. It's padded. It has drainage on the bottom. It has these big old rubber feet. So typically it lives in this when I'm on the water. Uh, the zippers on this are absolute garbage. So don't plan on using that. But it does have Velcro on the end here. So you can at least keep it shut and it's got super heavy duty straps so you can carry this gigantic cannonball of a camera around town. So that's decent. Other than the zippers, case is nice, very helpful, keeps uh, the whole rig dry, but your battery is actually in this, right? In the screen. But as you can see here, this whole platform is super robust. Water damage is not gonna be an issue. You've got these watertight plugs on the back. There's your DC in, which is where you're gonna actually charge it. There's your HDMI cable, which is where you're going to plug this in if you want an external screen, or if you wanna do video capture, which I'll show you here in a second. So you can adjust the screen a whole bunch of different ways. And then you actually have this really cool like camera slot. It holds your camera in place so it's not just bouncing around as you're traveling or as you're on the water, you can kind of just slide it in here. It locks into place. And I wanna show you guys this camera. So here's the AquaView camera. You can see it's got this really cool mohawk up here that is detachable. And you can actually put it on the other side if you wanted to flip this over. You've got this extremely high quality LED light setup here. You got a heavy, this is by the way, like four pounds by itself. So you got a super heavy duty camera um, <laughs> it's dripping water on me right now because I was fishing with it yesterday. Then you've got multiple options to mount this thing. So again, we can have the facing up position. We can have the horizontal, my personal preference. We can have the downwards profile. We can have it on a downward angle, which is not a bad idea either. So for example, if you're playing fish off the bottom or just off the bottom, having this in a hole next to the hole that you're fishing in on a downward angle is gonna let you see the bottom and see those fish that are hugging the bottom. Versus horizontal, there's often gonna be fish out of your vision, out of your line of sight, that are just gonna like come up and strike your jig. So if you wanna see a bit more of what's going on, this is probably another angle that I would go for. Top down is nice as well. Gives you a good idea. Your field of view is much wider there because if you just hold this up near the top, I can see a lot more of what's going on down below. I just can't really tell depth of the fish or the forage, right? And then to rig it, it's super easy. You actually just take your extremely heavy duty camera cable here and you just snap it into these little channels. So if I'm rigging my standard way here, there you go. Just like that, just snaps in there. And actually I missed one of the angles explaining to you guys here. Here's another one. That's kind of nifty. You could set the camera up kind of off the bottom there and have this upward angle. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, five angles. It's a lot, it's a lot of stuff you can do. As far as the menu goes, there's a lot more options on this bad boy than there are on the AOYOs, right? So first of all, here's your sort of image quality. Again, I'll show you guys some cleaner looking b-roll but hey there i am hi that's hd it's also in real time so that makes it extremely effective for fishing with whole bunch of options on here you can adjust the brightness with just one button there's a lot of different things you can do super effective super fun to fish with unfortunately super expensive so this model right here runs for about 850 dollars just for that they might, if you contact them, throw in a few bonus items, or if you can find a bundle. I got a bundle when I got this set up, and we ended up luckily getting it for a heavy discount. Um, by the way, if you wanna pick up your own, you can use our link in the description below. Look at that. So what I got in my bundle was actually this carrying case and this thing right here I wanna show you guys. This makes using the AquaView so much easier. 
There actually is like a little spot that you can lock your cable in right here on the case, which is okay. But what you'll notice with cameras, and one of the big issues that we had with the IOYO, and you'll see when we're out on the ice here, is that it just the camera just rotates because the cable gets wound up and then it rotates on you underwater. So it's hard to stay fixed at a fixed position unless you use something like this. And I ended up rigging the Ayoyo up to this and it made it way more effective, yet I still kind of had that issue. I think it's just the thinner cable makes it rotate more. The AquaView does not rotate nearly as much on this thing. So this is a little tripod. It's designed to fit over up to an eight inch hole in the ice. So we have this thing spread on these legs here, it goes back away like this, right? So we snap this baby out. So it sits over the hole and then you see this little metal thing right here with an S shape. That is so that you can take this cable, but you take your cable, you slot it in here, and then you just snap the other end there. So as you can see, it gets locked into place and it's not gonna move on you. And that prevents that rotation that we don't wanna see. Keep your eyes on the jig. Other cool thing about this is this is actually a powered unit. So if I unscrew this top, you can see the batteries there. So what you can do, so what you can do is you can take your key fob to your 1998 Pontiac Grand Am and you can just press this rotation button right here. Look at that. So that'll easily allow you to move your camera without having to do what you might see me doing in the video, which is rotating this whole thing and trying not to, you know, knock your camera loose as you do it. So when the batteries are dead, which mine were, you have to rotate like this. When the batteries work, super easy. You can just do this thing and you can actually go back and forth. That's a killer feature, something that I love. Just make sure, unlike me, you turn it off when you're done so it doesn't die by next season because it's running for nine, 10 months. So that unit right there will run you 50 to 70 bucks, kind of depending on where you get it, unless you, again, you can get it thrown in with a bundle like we did, which is really helpful. Finally, if you want to record, Aquaviews do have models at much higher price ranges that record on the system itself. This model does not. So you're easily spending over $1,000 to get a unit that records on it, or you get this one, and then you spend 200 extra bucks anyways to get something like this. This is the Aver Media. It is a 4K pass-through portable capture card, right? It looks like a crazy little pyramid device here. It's very odd, but this is a one touch. This is the button right here. Recording device that has HDMI input and output so that you can record through this. You also just take a SD card, just like we were looking at on the AYOYO. You slide it into the back there and it's powered by external USB batteries. So we typically use something like an Anchor portable battery. They're super cheap on Amazon. They're amazing. They last forever. And you just take your little micro USB, you plug it into this thing, you plug the other into the battery, which is currently powering my camera, so I'm not gonna do that. Just plug that into a portable battery, okay? That, <laughs> I know, I was like, the AOYO has so much stuff going on. Yeah, I get it, this has a lot going on too. In turn, I like to keep that into something that is gonna keep my capture card, all my cables and wires off the ground. So I might use something like this Six Sense case, or I've also used this little Cabela's bag here that can be functional as well. You're gonna plug it into your HDMI in from the unit. I think it's in. I always forget this, then I get out on the ice, then I test both. It doesn't let you record if it's not in the right uh, plug. So whatever, my bad if I'm wrong. Uh, just try the other one, 50-50 shot. You're gonna get it wrong every time. Just like USBs whenever you plug them in. Anyways, so you plug this in there. This goes into the back of the unit and you can see how that looks right here in this B-roll. So I've got everything sitting in that Sixth Sense case, plugged into the back of the AquaView, and now we are recording. I just press a simple button and the whole thing gets rolling from there. So there you go. Those are the two different options that we currently possess. There are many other options on the market. And, and in fact, Devo's Fishing mentioned to us the other day that Markham has a fantastic model that's in the five, $600 range. 
Again, I don't know if that one records. My assumption would be no. You probably have to get the external device like I have if you wanna do a recording and use that footage later for your YouTube channel, social media, whatever, or just for your own enjoyment. So just kinda of keep that in mind. Uh, again, pros and cons with the AquaView for us. Uh, the image quality is much better. Durability, much better. Camera cable's insane. LED on the camera, much better. It doesn't get like the AOYO had like one leaf in front of it and all of a sudden the whole screen was like dark. So much better camera all around. Of course, you're kind of getting what you're paying for. It's extremely expensive. And in order to record on it, you need to pay even more money to plug into this capture card and do all this other stuff. So you're easily spending around $1,000 to $1,100 all in on this setup, including your external battery, your capture card, all the other cables, your HDMI cable, USB cable, all that stuff. And then your carrying case and maybe your tripod piece. Obviously, there's a lot going on. You know what else you could do? You could get a Vexilar for 350 bucks, and then you could go find fish and play Atari all day. That is what I also like doing. So there's lots of options out there, but we wanted to present these two to you because we've now used them for a while and we can provide effective feedback. So this is our opinion, maybe not yours. And if you don't share this opinion, you can let us know in the comments below. If you appreciated these opinions, you can let us know that in the comments below because we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching this review. Hopefully it was helpful. If you're on the market for one of these devices, check out Ayoyo over on Amazon. Uh, there's a couple different models you can choose from. AquaView, there's a ton of different models. This one specifically is the HD7i. And again, for AquaView, use our code below in the description. We appreciate you guys doing that for us. And if you guys liked the video today, be sure to subscribe, smash the like, ring that notification bell, and come back Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. We go live. It's a blast. We'd love to see you there and talk to you in chat. All right, you guys, go get a camera or don't. We appreciate you. See you on the next video.